Welcome to beautiful Venice, California. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are just off one of the hippest streets in this city. It's known as Abbott Kinney, and we're walking into what's known as Electric Lodge. This is the home to Open Temple. I am telling you, this is a synagogue like nothing you have ever seen. Why don't you join me inside? Yep, you just saw that. Congregants at Open Temple got that Shabbos feeling and they're dancing to show it. But let's backtrack a bit and learn how Open Temple came into existence. We're here with Rabbi Lori. She is the spiritual leader of Open Temple here in Venice, California. We'll talk about Open Temple soon, but first I wanna talk about you and your journey to the rabbinate. Uh, How did Lori Shapiro become a rabbi? First, it was Lori Schneide at the time. <laughs> and I, I, it's just really a story about how did I accept my Jewish identity because I grew up in a place that was incredibly Jewish in the five towns of Long Island and Shabbat used to pass by our house every Friday night waiting for me to join her because I grew up in an incredibly assimilated family where there was no Jewish ritual or identity and so I had to go on my own emerging adulthood journey like so many young people do in their 20s and I ended up really learning about Jewish identity through traveling and feeling as I where though where you were in the five towns yeah. what better place to find your Jewish identity I'll take it back a little bit I grew up in theater so I was a child actor and I knew of ritual and the beauty of ritual and then once I became an adult I realized that didn't exist for me anymore and I had to ask myself where where does that exist that holy moment and so a young Lori went on a journey a worldwide journey that took her to India Mongolia, Spain, and ultimately, Lori found herself in Israel. Now, after traveling through Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and Haifa, Lori landed in the northern Israeli town of Svat. I opened the door, and there were these three young women, Abby, Romy, and Holly, and they were lighting the Hanukkah. And I put my bag down, and I stayed for the better part of the next year and a half. I get that you were touched by your experience in Israel, that you spent 18 months learning and studying, but then you became a rabbi. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation. I went back to the States and I was still had the wanderlust. So I did a backpacking trip in the South and I swear I heard a voice and it said, you're gonna be a rabbi, I'm on this bus, a greyhound. And I'm like, bleep. And it's like, no, you're gonna be a rabbi. So Lori began her journey to the rabbinate, a 13-year journey that saw her study at the American Jewish University, the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College, and the Academy for Jewish Religion, from which she received her rabbinical ordination. And then you decided to open a synagogue like nothing we've ever seen. was I married into Venice which is a very lovely thing to happen and Venice is really interesting because it's going through a period of adaptive change where as I see it the Millennials are are really articulating their adult journeys here it's a wonderful sort of cross-section of how Millennials do adulthood so right now what's happening here with all of this excitement and all of this creativity and all of this new media is exciting and yet the institutions to support young people coming together in community don't really exist and so really what's upon us is to create new institutions as I say with a healthy eye that can allow people to come together dwell together, celebrate together, weep together, feel together, and make our lives a blessing locally. The ritual that you've created. I mean, you have a band, you have maracas, you have, I don't know what all these are called, you know, the Partridge Family instruments. I mean, you have it all and it's working. Thank you. 
Thank you. We well, a lot of it also is is looking at Judaism and with the education I've had, to see that we've always, we've always um, taken what was popular culture of its time and made it a part of our ritual space. But there's so much of Judaism that isn't doing that, that is sticking mightily, stubbornly to tradition. Tradition of not the last millennium, but the millennia before. <laughs> and so for you to bring Judaism into the 21st century in the way you are, some would say is, is quite a bold move. That's a sweet way of putting it. <laughs> I think it's, you know, I, I think I identify a little bit with Antigone, like if I can't live with truth, I cannot live, right? So my, this is my truth. And the point of Open Temple is it's very boutique -y. We're not looking for every community to look like us. We're not looking to change the world. We're looking to create our, our little village where we can do Jewish ritual beautifully in a contemporary way. You are meeting the greatest of what the millennial generation is here tonight. These two young men that you see before you, I, they're, they're truly seekers, artists, not rushing to assume some identity, but really slowing the pace down to live their truths. And what will emerge with both of them, because they're so wildly, wildly talented, are paths that will eventually emanate and, and allow other people to be uplifted by whatever they choose. And so what, what we're allowing here is allowing the spiritual path for the millennials, for these young people in their 20s and early 30s, to be a, a safe place so that they can go deep in their identities and then discover what it is their life's journey is about without the world telling them what it should be about. Zach Pachtel is, I guess, known as the Divine Rhymer here at Open Temple. Six foot five, played football at Harvard. He played basketball at Minnesota. I don't know what he's doing now. What I want to know is, how did you wind up here at Open Temple? Oh, my God. Uh, through the universe blessing me in so many ways. I met Rabbi Lori, and she's been the biggest blessing in my life. And Open Temple uh, is this, like, crock pot of creativity and Judaism where we get to just express ourselves and to connect to uh, spirit, uh, to Torah, and to each other. What is it about Rabbi Lori? What is it about Open Temple oh that speaks to you? Because look, you're a young guy, talented. You could be doing a lot of things. Yeah. It's Friday night. Yeah. You could be doing a lot of things. Why do you choose to come to Open Temple on Friday night to sing, to rhyme? <laughs> to talk to these folks mm -hmm. who come in from the streets of Venice. Yeah, uh, sharing in this space, there's nothing I'd rather be doing on a Friday night. Uh, and it's interesting because we're re-enchanting Judaism. And me personally, I've had my own disenchantment from Judaism. And what Open Temple has allowed me to do is to open that back up uh, through spirit, through community. And Rabbi Lori is like the sister I never had. She's like the woman who matches me on the crazy level and tells me to go more in the name of love and more in the name of spirit. Uh, and so I just have pure gratitude and love for Open Temple and for the Shapiros and everyone here. <laughs> What is it about Jewish music? What is it about Jewish music at Open Temple that keeps you so active in this out-of-the-box, forward-thinking synagogue? Yeah, great question. So, in particularly with Open Temple, what I love about it is that we get to have this really open, freaky, funky live music that, that enlivens it. It's not um, really a traditional situation with our music and the way that we do all of our services and the way we connect and so the sky's the limit as far as what I get to do with uh, Rabbi Lori and making a bunch of different unique offerings and taking just really interesting music and putting together arrangements so I love how live it is and how it gets to be like a full band sound and then as far as Jewish music compared to secular music what I learned is that there's a different place in your heart and your soul that you come from when you play devotional music and so getting to be in a devotional music space 
and lead an incredible seven-person band is like you know a major win-win for me. And not only are members of the band seeing Open Temple as a win-win, meet the lay president of this institution. This is Nikki Lebo. She is the president of Open Temple here in Venice, California. How did you find this rather unique synagogue? One day, I was walking on Abbot Kinney. There's a big Abbot Kinney festival, and there was this wonderful woman, and she was here representing Open Temple. I said, you know, I'm going to try that. We came to Shabbat. There was dancing. There was a... Um, man dressed as a goat doing an interpretive <laughs> dance. Uh, the end of the service, they turned off all the lights and played Dancing in the Dark. Dave and I looked at each other, my husband, and we went, oh my God, we love this place. So we started coming. And at this point, my daughter, who was about to be, uh, it was going into the bat mitzvah world, we decided uh, we wanted to take her here. In the middle of the service, I looked over and she was crying. I just had this moment. Judaism can be fun. I can actually enjoy it and I can understand it. And it was just such an amazing experience and I really found God through Open Temple and I turned to my mom and said I have to do my bat mitzvah here. How was your bat mitzvah? It was pretty much, it was the most spectacular thing I could ever think of. I was really, really nervous when it started, like really nervous. But uh, as soon as I got into the room with Rabbi Lori, everyone kind of disappeared and it was just me and her together. And it was just, it was, it was really, really amazing. And so a lot of people, it's like, it's the service is boring and then it's the party. I, I, I mean, I love the party, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> it was just all the service. It was so amazing. Like, I still can't forget the day. So the most incredible spiritual bat mitzvah, you were there. And that is what I must say, because the reason we're here, as I was at that bat mitzvah, and... I have never experienced a bat mitzvah, a bar mitzvah, any service in the Jewish faith or any faith like that. Mm -hmm. What I said to you, it was perfect. Yeah. I mean, it truly was perfect. It was perfect for Rose. It was perfect for Nikki. Mm -hmm. It was perfect for Dave. Yeah. It was, it, it spoke to me. Well, it's upbeat. It's... 21st century, there's spoken word, there's a band. And the, the way Shabbat is, uh, here on a Friday night is exactly the way Rose's bat mitzvah was. And let's talk about you because we've known each other for a long time. Um, I never knew you to be kind of uber super Jew that would get involved in temple, no, yeah, no. In, in, in kind of temple <laughs> politics, but you yeah. are now president of this temple you know it was it's rabbi lori you know i i truly believe sometimes in life you're picked you know certain people she was picked she was supposed to do this open temple really is a place that we all do it together it's not a show it's a ritual space where we're all bringing ourselves to life and i think that's what's so unique about what's going on here this is not uh i call it this is not robitussin judaism take it and you'll feel better this is Judaism of alacrity, of sacred moments, of listening to the voices of the past, maybe pulling the curtain back and letting them amplify even more so that we can hear the wisdom that I like to think is epigenetically in us anyway. Okay, if you want to learn more about this incredibly unique out-of-the-box 21st century synagogue, you can sign on to opentemple.org.